Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF. I'm Sneha Jaswal, and I'm going to be talking about the book We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Now, this book came out in 1962 and has been on my wish list for a really long time now. So I was obviously excited about reading it. It's a gothic mystery novel, although honestly, I would say it's not a mystery novel maybe in the 60s, but for modern readers who are used to reading thrillers, it would be best to treat it as a psychological gothic fiction story than mystery because most modern readers will be able to figure out who the root cause of all the problems is, and that can really dampen your spirit and excitement to finish it. The story is about the Blackwood family. Only three members live in a huge mansion, and we're informed that six years ago, a tragedy befell upon the family four members were poisoned and only these three survived. The youngest survivor, 18-year-old Mary Catherine Blackwood, is the narrator of the tale. She's this angry young woman who really hates the rest of the world and the only person she's fond of is her elder sister Constance. And she tries to be nice to her uncle Julian who's wheelchair bound and lives with them, the third surviving member of the family. Now Mary is the most interesting character not just because she's the narrator and we get to see the world from her perspective, but also because she's this devious little child. I mean, well, she's 18, but it feels like she's still stuck in the head of a 14-year-old and she believes in a lot of spells and charms and weird little practices. Like, for example, she, she buries a lot of trinklets and odd little things like silver dollars on the property in the ground because she thinks that it will help keep them safe. What I really like about the story is the kind of bond that Constance and Mary have. Constance knows about all these eccentric things her sister does. She's absolutely supportive about it or just laughs them off. Basically, the three remaining surviving Blackwoods are pretty content with the kind of life they're leading, although Uncle Julian is obsessed with trying to solve the mystery poisoning in which the four other Blackwoods died. But apart from that, they live a pretty secluded, content life. So when a cousin arrives on the Blackwood property, a man called Charles, who's about four years older than Constance, Mary's completely upset. She thinks that he's dangerous and is there to disrupt their lives. So she tries all sorts of things to get him out of their property. And his arrival eventually leads to some more tragedy for the Blackwoods. Now, like I already said, the mystery aspect of the story wasn't as strong. But there was a lot of dark humor peppered through the book, which would be amusing to a lot of readers. For example, all the friends and acquaintances of the family looks upon the Blackwood girls as some sort of victims, but the girls have actually made their peace with their losses. In fact, Constance and Mary don't even mind bringing up that day and going into weird details to scare their guests away. Although there is obvious psychological impact on all the surviving Blackwoods, Mary is a problem child. Constance is agoraphobic, she doesn't like stepping out of the Blackwood property at all and absolutely dreads meeting anybody new. And Uncle Julian, he isn't just stuck to the wheelchair, he's also stuck in the past, reliving the day of the tragedy again and again because he wants to solve the mystery case of poisoning. Shirley Jackson definitely captures the psychological aspects of human experiences really well. But I feel like her writing wasn't as smooth as I was hoping it to be because it's the kind of book that I would ideally finish in a day, but it took me four or five days due to the choppy flow of the event. Also towards the end, the story gets extremely unrealistic, but to Shirley Jackson's credit, she does sort of weave it in a way that is open to interpretation. So with a little bit of imagination, the reader can draw their own conclusions with what exactly happens with the Blackwood family. We Have Always Lived in a Castle is an interesting book. It's not exactly horror, neither is it mystery. It's just a strange gothic flavoured book about a family living in its own bubble after a tragedy strikes. And that's all for this episode. Talk to you the next time.